Now, let's talk about pricing and how you should price your coffee. How do you price your coffee and how much should you charge? Pricing could become a tricky encounter. See, the thing about it is you don't want to price your products and coffee to a point where you can't generate profit to further grow your business. At the same time, however, you don't want the price to be so high that it scares customers away. See, the key is you want to sell yourself as a destination rather than just somewhere to grab a cup of coffee. If you sell yourself as a destination, your customer is not only paying for a cup of coffee, but they're also paying for the experience, a getaway, a place where they can lounge around, a place where they can meet new people, make friends, and a place where they can study or hold business meetings. When deciding on how you should price your coffee, you want to put yourself into the role of a consumer. You want to ask yourself, what would make me feel comfortable paying $10 for a cup of coffee? Is it the customer service, the location of the coffee shop, the friendly atmosphere, or the perceived quality of the product and barista? These are the features that validate someone wanting to pay a premium. The great thing about this is that you have absolute control over these variables. As a business owner of your coffee shop, it's important to protect your coffee shop's perception of high quality. If you protect the perception of your business, you will also protect the price. So something simple as an unclean toilet can reduce the amount that your customers are willing to pay for their coffee, and they may also start looking elsewhere. Now, one of the valuable assets of having a business plan is that it will help you secure funding. A well-written business plan can help you get credit lines from banks and investors. They will want to read your business plan so that they can learn more about your company's profitability and make informed choices as to whether or not they should invest in your business or how much they might choose to invest. So because of the value of owning a business plan can bring you, we're going to fully address this topic to make sure that you fully understand how to write your own business plan so that you can get investors interested. So what's included in a business plan and how do we write one effectively? Generally, the business plan will have all eight of these key elements. Executive summary, company description, market analysis, marketing and sales, organization and management, operating plan, financial plan, appendices and exhibits. When writing your executive summary, make sure you keep it short and simple. So let's take a look at an executive summary I've created for my client who is trying to grow his coffee shop business. As we can see here, we have a well-polished executive summary, which reads as follow. Ground Up Cafe will be the hotspot place for coffee enthusiasts. We plan to serve the best quality coffee and snacks in a fashionable, friendly environment. Our convenient location and outstanding customer service should build a consistent, loyal customer base. My partner, Emily, and I, Jason, have several years of experience in the food service industry, including management. Our main products will be high margin gourmet coffee products such as espressos, cappuccino, latte, and a wide range of snacks, including healthy alternatives. What is market analysis and why is it important when it comes to writing a business plan? The goal of the market analysis is to demonstrate that you have analyzed the target customers properly and that there is enough interest in your products to make the coffee shop business profitable. In comparison to our competitors, we expect our revenues to grow strongly as we build our customer base. Now, as you can see here, to give our readers more visuals, we've decided to set up a table and list our two competitors, Cupo Joe and Mugs Coffee, and how our ground up cafe coffee shop compares to theirs. There are four aspects we are looking at, particularly regarding estimated annual revenue, employees, price, and quality. Of course, we don't have their exact annual revenue, but we can make a good estimate based on seeing how much traffic they're pulling in and the price they're charging. So as you can see here, we've identified who our target customer is going to be and how we're going to reach them. We also took initiatives by undertaking consumer research to ensure that there is a demand for high end coffee and also explain the most frequent complaints that consumers have about existing competition in the area and how we are going to resolve it. The balance sheet is important because it shows the financial position of the company at a specific point of time and allows you to compare what you have achieved in the past and what you want to achieve in the future. Break even analysis. This shows the extent to which your company will be profitable. Providing a break even analysis tells investors how much revenue you need to achieve in order to make a profit. So if you're a startup, you're not going to have a lot of data to show. So what we're going to do here is set an example as if you're already in business for a full year. 
Here's an example of how your financial plan should look like. As we can see here in this example, we have our income statements. Right below the income statement, we have the company revenue data. So let's look here at the sales revenue. As you can see here, we have a total of six products for sale. We have on record coffee sales, retail sales, dessert sales, food sales, bottled drinks, and bean sales. Now, if we look at coffee sales, we can see that our revenue here is $100,000. For retail sales, it is $5,000. For dessert sales, it is $20,000. For food sales, it is $20,000. For bottled drinks, it is $5,000. And for bean sales, it is $0. If we add all this up together, $150,000 will be our total net sales, leaving $150,000 as our total revenue. So now let's take a look at the expense paid out by the company. Now, what's a floor plan and how does it add value to your coffee shop? A good floor plan can increase the value of your coffee shop by maximizing space, light and airflow, while at the same time creating a natural flow between rooms. So the reason for creating a floor plan is to prevent your coffee shop from feeling cluttered, cramped, and uninviting. Here are eight elements that we need to include when designing your floor plan. Retail location, calculation of commercial rent price per square foot, entrance area, interior space, interior design, lighting, furnishing, coffee bar, and kitchen. Funding your business. After creating your floor plan, the next step you want to follow is to fund your coffee shop. Now, in order to fund your business, you want to be aware of all your options and the best way to get the money you need quickly. When it comes to starting your business, there are many other ways you can get capital, such as applying for grants and crowdfunding. But in this section, we're going to talk about the most impactful options that will make a real difference and make it worth your time to get immersed in and how to approach them successfully to get the money you need to jumpstart your coffee shop. In this section, you will learn how to build business credit to get capital to start and grow your coffee shop. You will learn everything with a step-by-step -step approach that you can use to fund your business. Building business credit to get capital. Now let's start with how you can build your business credit to get capital for your coffee shop. Here's the reality. People want to give you the money. They want to give you a loan so that you can make the most productive use of it and the lenders in return make their money back through interest. So for example, if you borrow $100,000 from a lender at an interest rate of 2.5% for five years, you will pay a total of $12,500 in interest. $12,500 is how much the lender is going to make in five years. So with $100,000 from a single lender, that capital you will have access to will be able to start and grow your coffee shop successfully. Understand that people want to give you the money. That's why people are investing in stocks. That's why people are investing in bonds. And that's why people are investing in mutual funds. They're always looking for a place where they can put their money in and watch it grow, almost like growing a tree. So what this means is that you can purchase items from the vendor and you will have to pay back in full in over 30, 60 or 90 days. This is completely different from your personal credit. So for example, for your personal credit, let's say you have a credit limit of $500 and you have a charge of 250. Because your personal credit is a revolving account, you can pay 30 to $50 a month until you pay 250 in full. But when it comes to business credit, if you have a $500 credit limit and you have a $250 worth of charges, you'd have to pay it back in full by either 15, 30, 60 or 90 days. Finding commercial space for your business. The next step you want to follow after you have financed your business is to find a commercial space to house your coffee shop. There is a lot of ways you can go about finding a commercial space to house your coffee shop. However, in this course, we're going to talk about the most effective ways to find a commercial space for your business. Here are the four ways for you as a coffee entrepreneur to find commercial rental space. Coffee shop equipment list. Now, let's talk about all the equipments you will need in order to successfully run your coffee shop. Here are the eight essential equipments you need to grow your coffee shop from the ground up. What investors are looking for is not great ideas, but great characters. They want to invest in someone who's always on the hunt to figure out a way. 
They want to invest in your ability to hustle, your ability to be resourceful, your ability to figure it out on your own. That's how you get an investment. And let's say that once you've managed to make your coffee shop business profitable from home and everyone in your community knows about your coffee business and they're your active customers, now you're going to have proof to show that your company has growth potential. You've built a brand that people know about. Now, when you get an investment, you will officially be able to open up a coffee shop and your customers will be able to dine in in one of your locations. Finding investors. Now, let's talk about how to find investors to invest in your coffee shop. First of all, I want to give you a perspective you probably haven't noticed. Understanding money as a tool. As a coffee shop owner, you want to understand how money works when it comes to people spending decisions so that you can capitalize on this knowledge. People spend money if they believe the value of what they will receive back in return will be more than the money that is spent. This goes for every product and service. Understanding money as a tool is essential for you to grow your coffee shop business. Money is a representation that you have done something valuable to someone at some point in the past and an ongoing belief that you can give it to someone else in exchange for something equally valuable at some point in the future. Money is a way of measuring the awareness, willingness, and ability as a person to contribute to the well-being of members of society. Understand that money is an involved form of trading goods and or services. Hiring CEOs and administrators to run the coffee shop business for you. As your coffee shop begins to grow, you want to start looking for people who can manage your coffee shop business. In doing so, you will allow yourself more free time to focus on growing your coffee shop company to the next level. The kind of CEOs and administrators you want to have on your team are those who have the same vision as you do. You want to find the ones who are actually better than you to run your business. Hiring the right CEO for your coffee shop business can be one of your greatest assets and can contribute to the success of your coffee shop. Strategy and execution. In achieving your business success through coffee shops, your strategy and execution are what matters the most. Hard work is only one ingredient for achieving success in the pursuit of your financial freedom, but the other important element is your strategy and execution. When executing your strategy, you want to decide what is the most important activity that will help you carry out your plan. You are selling more than just coffee identifying and maximizing your unique selling proposition. Understand that you are selling more than just coffee is the next step in achieving massive success. When you start your coffee shop from the ground up, you want to keep this aspect in mind. As you are building, you want to ask yourself, will this add to create the atmosphere for my ideal customers? Will my prospective customers choose my location as a place to conduct business? Will my prospective customer choose my place as a place where they can read a great novel and enjoy themselves? Every action you take should be towards achieving that goal for your customers. A good coffee shop should create a warm, homely atmosphere, providing spaces where people can sit and work in relative privacy. When designing your coffee shop, you want to make the experience to be as seamless as possible. The designs, colors, floors, and furniture needs to complement each other and feel organic. You want your coffee shop to be more than just a place to have a coffee. You want to make it an experience. The goal of designing your coffee shop is to provide your prospective customers with a positive experience that will keep them coming back for more. Getting the best coffee supplier. Getting the best coffee supplier is the next step towards achieving massive success. The quality of your coffee is a key factor in the success of your coffee shop. The process of finding a supplier can be challenging as you want to choose the coffee that your customers will like while at the same time getting them at the lowest possible price so that you can make a profit. Other than quality, you want to find a supplier that is very reliable and can deliver consistency day after day for your coffee shop business. Here are the four things you want to do to make it easier to find the right supplier. Flourishing as a coffee shop owner in times of uncertainty. Flourishing as a coffee shop owner during a pandemic or a recession can be a challenge, but as an entrepreneur, you want to focus on what you know and what you can control. Trying to pay attention to things that you have little or no control over will only give you frustration and worry. Dealing with pandemics. Building multiple streams of revenue. 
As a coffee shop owner, you want to think about how you can increase your revenue streams outside your coffee shop. Your coffee shop is your primary business, but have you thought about creating and selling lots of masks? Have you ever looked at other opportunities that may have emerged as a result of the pandemic and capitalized on that opportunity? Even though you are the CEO of your coffee shop, the purpose of a business is to fulfill and satisfy people's needs. And as an entrepreneur, you always want to look for other ways to bridge the gap and fulfill the needs of people. A coffee shop is just one of your business that provides people with value and it's something that people are willing to pay for. Taking control of your cash flow. To thrive during uncertain times, taking control of your cash flow is essential. To keep your coffee shop alive and to keep your net worth growing, it is important to know what to do with the money you have earned through your coffee shop business. You should always put the money you make towards another purpose. Making the most of current customers. As a coffee shop owner, you want to find a way to make the most of the current customers in order to thrive in uncertain times. There's always room for your coffee shop to increase sales. A good strategy for getting the most out of your current customer base is to incentivize larger purchases. When your company struggles to remain profitable, you want to consider upselling to your current customers to buy more per visit. Now, in order to successfully incentivize larger purchases, you want your customers to know that there is. If your medium sized specialty cup is $5, let the customer know that they can get a large for $5.80. The customer will rationalize and think, well, since I'm already paying $5 for a medium specialty coffee, an extra 80 cents for a large one doesn't seem like a bad deal at all. You want to train your baristas to suggest the largest size for customers who don't specify the size to increase sales. The average cost is 30 cents to make a coffee. So if you sell coffee for $5, the profit you earn is $4.70. So if you sell a large coffee, but what do investors want and how can we put ourselves in a position to raise money for your coffee shop? There are five things investors want to know when they evaluate your business. They want to know one, an industry they are familiar with. Two, a management team they believe in. Three, an idea with a large market and a competitive advantage. Four, a business that has momentum or traction. Five, an idea that will produce cash flow. So bearing this in mind, we now know how to approach investors in a way that will likely result in your coffee shop being funded. For each of these, you will have complete control except for an industry they are familiar with. Now you can approach an investor who has no idea about your industry, but you'd have to educate investors about the